Hello there and cheers for joining us uh, on another video about Scotland and its history. Uh, this time I'm at the Kraken site just behind me, which is Denad, Old Scottish Hill Fort and the poor base for the Kingdom of Dalriada. Just here in the car park just now and they've got these information posts. dates back about uh, 1500 years. The reckon from the top, yeah, the surrounding area, you can see it's got about 800 ancient monuments dating back several thousand years. But uh, we'll head up there and see what we can see. First time I've been here, so drove past it tons of times, but first time I've actually been up. But we'll, we'll see what we can see. Might be some uh, some good views at the very least. And certainly some great history. So we'll see you up there. We cottage to stay. Down there as well. Silver. the old gateway in through the centre and that was impression of what they think it looked like we are round about here and that's that gateway there and the walls would have would have run round here Follow kings, saints and merchants through the rock cut passage to enter the royal centre of Gaelic Dalriada.
some of the stuff found in the National Museum in Edinburgh. Birth of a nation. Kings of Dalia ruled the kingdom from Dinad. Their descendants became the first kings of Scotland. And their people called the Scotty became the first Scots. This is us in the, the centre of the fort. Some of the things to look out for. There's a well. Another look at the gate in there. This is probably one of the most important sites in Scotland's history. You can see there, there's been steps up onto the upper level. You can still make the steps out, you up through there. Just over here. That's all man made. Wall there. And there's uh, been a bit coming off, off here. You can just see that ridge. This is us at the base of Gilbarton Glen. I reckon when you're up here, yeah. the landscape which you can see around about you, you're surrounded by, I think it's 800 historic uh, monuments. Um, ancient burial sites, standing stones, uh, dating back into the Bronze Age and before. So it's been a site of significance for for a very long time and that's the coast just uh, just out there and this also bowl carved out the rock a set of steps leading up there we'll go up there later now I'm just standing over something here and it's probably one of the most important uh, parts of Scottish history and that is this rock here and the footprint in it, the inauguration stone and it's said that when someone put their foot in there that it would recognise uh, the true king But, uh, there's also some some carvings you can just about make out and there's also a Pictish boar somewhere um, I'm trying to find that but 
and just uh, just over here to the left is this basin uh, cut out in the cut out the rock. Stunning. You can just make out down there uh, faint out outlines of the walls. see some you can see the, the foundations of the of some of the, the, the fortifications just go up on the top level You can see here the remains of the walls. This would have looked a lot different back then. This here would have probably looked a, a bit more like that. Although they would have farmed as well. Modern forestry in the distance here. That would have been more like more like this here. Definitely a place worth coming if you like your if you like your history. There's walks um, to get my bearings. Uh, yeah, walks up through here. Uh, it take you up past all the the old standing stones and the, the burial cairns. So. If you're visiting, it's well worth a pack a sandwich, bottle of water, good pair of boots, and uh, go for a walk. Something I'm certainly going to do myself in a, in a better day, but not too far down there. You got Loch uh, Gilphead uh, just north of me here. Um, you've got Oban. So two places on the on the tourist trail but unfortunately most people that road there that links the two just drive past this and don't even come in to see it. You see the size of these these stones here. And according to the, the artist's impression which is uh, which is down there. This would have been a kind of a round structure on the top here. And it's probably where the where the king would have stayed. Well, almost certainly as I say it's been it's been the highest point in the fort. Down there would have been the, the dwellings for the the lesser peoples. There's been some stunning stuff found on this site. Um, a lot of it you'll see in the, the museum in Edinburgh, the National Museum. But uh, first time I've been here, stunning. And that's the uh, inauguration stone there. 
It's a wee information board next day, but it's been badly weathered. That's something there that I've always wanted to see, one of the most important parts of the, the nation of Scotland's history. The people that lived here, these, they weren't any, they weren't any Picts, uh, although there is, the Pictish boar was, was carved in one of the rocks, but uh, the Picts uh, were rivals. To these uh, to these peoples for a for a long time before the before they merged and the and the cultures became intertwined uh, and that was the the beginnings of the of the nation of Scotland or Alaba. The Picts actually attacked us. I uh, can't remember uh, what year. Well, if you don't fall down these steps, I've seen the, the pics actually. They attacked Alriada and uh, and took over for a uh, for a spell. That's maybe when the when the Pictish boar came to be. There is other sort of carvings meant to be in this but they're all they're all well weathered. It actually says that the, the it says on the information board that the that the footprint in that was was covered up with concrete. Which is probably right this I yeah, to save it back in the nineteen seventies. Yeah. Nice one. Right, I've actually found the boar. The bat I thought was a kind of just a faint carving on the rock here. That's the footprint there to the left of it. Here. It's quite a big Pictish boar. Now you've got feet here, been the front, back, back legs here, and the head here. It's a shame. It's really you can barely make it out. You can just about make it out on the when I hold the camera back like this, but. That's the that's a Pictish boar carved on the same rock as the as the footprint. The information board here. That's a that's a scan of the boar. Is this here? I don't know whether that's some kind of ogum. Right. Uh, it's a uh, text written in the ancient form of writing called ogum. Let's see if we can see that. That apparently is along these edges, these edges here. So just in this one rock alone there's been a mass of history. Pretty cool. And uh, this bowl here. Something to do with the ceremonies.
coming through the, the gate there, inauguration stones just up, up there, up, up these stairs, and uh, the main, main dwelling up the top for the, well I reckon it would have been the king. There's meant to be a well here in here somewhere, which uh, rose and fell with the, is the tide, rose and fell. So that's quite obvious masonry. All lying about here. You just well wonder what was here up until a couple of hundred years ago before people stopped taking uh, stone away for building houses and dry stone dikes. This is his uh, see here, which looks like it's been parts of structures, but that's your, uh, your outer walls, here. <coughs> you can see the, the bases of them here, levels above and demolition debris either side. Looks as if that might be something down there. I'll go and have a wee look. Just here, next to this wall here, found the the well. Somebody's put this capstone over the top here. It's filled up with rubble. There's a lot of demolition rubble here as well. Anyway, that well is said on one of the signs. It's meant to er, er, its levels meant to arose and fell as the as the tide came in and went out. We're not far away from the sea, but I don't know how that would have affected their water quality. Doesn't it sound as if it's uh, as if it's been too fresh, but uh, yeah. I'd mentioned when I was up there about uh, Dinad and Dalriada being uh, overrun by the Picts. I couldn't remember the dates, but it actually says it on this. Under that section there, conquered. Dinad fell to the powerful Pictish warlord Angus in 736 AD. Some scholars believe it may never have regained its independence eh, and that the fortress became a ceremonial centre used to maintain control over Dalriada. And if I recall, I think the, the Pictish king eh, placed his son in control eh, of Dalriada. But, eh, aye. been a stunning gateway there, you just wonder over the course of time when this place was in in its heyday who actually came marching in through that or marching out I mean when you look at this when it's, when it's like this you can see all these just foundations of structures everywhere just lines in the ground everywhere absolutely stunning can't believe it took me this long to actually come here there looks the droppings of goat sheep grazing on this get more rubble here it's a bronze plaque GR from the George Regina protected ancient monument my 
dog enjoying himself. You can see the other corners on the on that wall. Oh well, we'll draw this one to a close. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, hit the like button. Hey, check out the rest of the videos on the channel. Subscribe to the channel and keep up to date with any future productions. And of course, share the videos. So it's all about get Scotland history out here. And that's though it doesn't look like much today, is an important part of Scottish history. So. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, you folks take care of yourselves, haste you back and slange.